So can you tell us where the work is now? So much of what you're doing is carrying on the legacy of Maddie's work, but you're also doing a lot of tremendous outreach in your own life with your own wisdom and your own mentorship and learning. And uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about that. I mentor 30 teenagers a year, so I'll be up at 90 by you know a few months from now, that are from all over the world. I mean, we're talking five continents, dozens and dozens of countries. Um, and these are teens with all different skin colors, all different languages, all different religions, all different cultures, all different economic status. They come to America so that I can teach them about Maddie's life and Maddie's message. And then the Weir Family Foundation gives them cameras and technology and we teach them to write speeches and apply for grants. And ultimately what they do is they take Maddie's message back to their country with their own shape and words. They create their own peace projects that meet the basic needs of some group of people. Because Maddie said peace doesn't begin with ending war. Peace begins with being okay with who you are as a person by having your basic needs met. So we teach the teens to balance basic needs so that people can be okay with who they are and then begin to be okay with their neighbors. And what is the Just Peace Summit that occurs every year? Tell me about that. Every uh -huh. spring, right. we bring 30 teens. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we look for 30 kids who aren't just looking for a free trip to the United States, not looking for a summer camp on peace. We're looking for kids who show longevity, that show they've been passionate about peace. And what we do is give them the inspiration to not give up when there is a storm, and we give them the technology and tools and networking and mentoring that they need to grow their projects so that they can do what they're already doing in a better way. We basically take peace seekers and peacemakers and teach them to be peace bringers. Yes, yes. Those were the, the three uh, choices of peace that Maddie spoke about, right? Yeah, choose yeah. to make peace an attitude. You have to want it. Be a peace seeker. Choose to make peace a habit. You have to live it. Be a peacemaker. And choose to make peace a reality. Share it. Be a peace bringer. That, and he explains what each of those mean um, but he said it's a sequence. You can't just bring peace if it doesn't matter to you at all times. Yeah. You know, we can't just say peace is good when we win the war, when we don't lose our job, when we have enough food. He said we, we have to seek, make, and bring peace even when we're suffering, when we're scared. When somebody hurts us, we still have to believe that peace matters, and that's the root of peace. Jenny, what would you have us do with all of this? What, what's the next step? Where do we go? What, what do we need to do? Yes. Somebody needs to make peace sensational. Yes. My teens are pretty sensational. I work with kids in New Jersey. I've worked with them for years. There's a teacher who, um, in New Jersey, this is also in the Messenger book, saw Maddie on that first Oprah show in 2001. And from that day forward, he changed how he taught. And now there's the Maddie Stepanek Award that's given out when the kids graduate. They have a peace park named after Maddie, a library named after Maddie, and Maddie's books are an official part of their curriculum now. Um, the kids are raised on Maddie, so he's not a lesson. He's not a message. He is a way of living and learning and being. And that's what we need to focus on is how sensational is that? 